Hello and welcome to Building a Generation on City Schools TV, where we highlight all the amazing things our students, teachers, school leaders, and communities are doing in Baltimore City Public Schools. I'm Nina Marklin. I'm Imani Humphrey-Torres from the City School Student Media Team. Thank you for joining us on our mission in Building a Generation. In this episode, we are laser focused on celebrating Career Technology Education Month by featuring our CTE Explained series. First, we'll be headed to Forest Park to get a glance of the culinary programs. Then we are going to Dunbar to watch the students bring to life the EMT program. Next, we'll be getting creative at the Baltimore Design School as we watch students get hands-on experience in the architect program as they work on their projects. Then, you should put on a helmet because you're going to Edmondson West Side to get a glimpse of what the carpentry program is all about. Then we will take a trip back to Forest Park, but this time we'll be looking at the auto program. Don't forget about the question of the show, so pay close attention. Finally, after the question of the show, we'll be taking a look at an event that celebrates our amazing CTE programs called CTE Demo Day. We've got a lot to show, so let's jump right into it. Our first story takes place at Forest Park High School. This segment of CTE Explained is about the culinary arts pathway, which is perfect for our resident chef and today's reporter, Bryce Taylor. Let's see what the students at Forest Park are whipping up. Take it away, Bryce. Hey, it's Bryce Taylor, and welcome to another episode of our series, CTE Explained. In this series, we dive deep into different CTE programs, talk with students, and get a real feel for what it's like. In this episode, it's about culinary, but more specifically, baking. In a couple minutes, I'll be bringing in Jordan, and she's gonna teach us how to make snickerdoodles. Look at this. So, let's cut the chit chat and get cooking. All right, so I'm here with Jordan. Now, Jordan, tell me, what are we making today? We are making snickerdoodle cookies. All right, so what's in a snickerdoodle? Butter, sugar, flour, vanilla, baking soda, a tad bit of salt, and then you would roll it into the cinnamon sugar mixture, which is right here. All right, let's, let's get going. So what's the first thing we're adding? So we're going to add some flour. All right. We're going to start off with a cup. Make sure this is level. Why do we level? Because you would want correct measurements when you're baking, because one thing could throw it off. I think that's pretty cool how it has to be so precise, and if, if it's not precise, if it's just off by a little bit, it just completely goes up in the air. I yeah. think baking is pretty cool. Baking is like more of like a science. And now we're adding another cup of flour. So it seems like it's, a, it's actually a lot of math when it comes to baking. Yes, and that's why before we actually could get into the kitchen, we have to do math work to make sure that we're able to do the correct measurements while baking. Makes sense. Why do you like baking in culinary? I've been baking and cooking since I was a young child, so this just brings me joy. All right, so once we add our flour, what are we doing next? We will be mixing. So what do you learn every day here in the culinary program? In the culinary program, I have to learn. We learn patience because sometimes it doesn't always turn out right the first time. I get that. What's the next ingredient? The next ingredients we'll be adding is one and one half tablespoon of cream of tartar. This is what makes the snickerdoodle soft. This is the key ingredient. All right, let's get the tartar in. Start with the half a teaspoon. So does, the cream, does it have any specific flavor? Does it flavor the cookie at all or is it just? Oh, it, no, it's not a flavor. It helps with the texture of the cookie. A half a teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, now what does the baking soda do? The baking soda helps it rise. Okay. You know what happens if you add too much? It's going to overflow. It's going to overflow? Yes. I mean, to me, cookies overflowing. I'm pretty happy. I feel like I get more. And we're adding salt now? Yeah. Alrighty. The salt helps balance, balance out the sweetness. And now we'll be adding two teaspoons of vanilla. And the vanilla just gives it that finishing nice snickerdoodle flavor, right? Yeah. This stuff is very, very powerful. Our last ingredient that we'll be adding is the last egg. Would you like last to do egg? the honors? Of course, of course. No shells. No shot. Crack close to the bowl. All right. Hmm. The batter is done. And the next step would be rolling it inside of the cinnamon sugar mixture. Now, why do we sprinkle this on the bottom? Because when you're baking, but you want to have the flavor at the bottom of the cookie too, not just on the surface. That makes perfect sense. This is where it's gonna get messy at right here. We put it, we scoop it into our hands, and then now what are you doing? 
I don't want to put the batter inside the bowl, so I'm going to like mix it right here. And I always add like little by little because you can always add more, but you can never take away. And that's what I learned. Now, how does you know this this uh, culinary class tie into your everyday life? Um, it ties into my everyday life because I have another job, like an actual catering job. You got that experience down pat? I'm still learning. So you would say you feel like you're prepared for jobs? Yeah. Okay. And then you don't want to add too much batter because the cookies expand. How much do they expand by? I would say about two inches. Okay. So you want to give the cookie some space. Okay. What's the okay. oven set to? 350 degrees. And how long do we bake them for? Um, 10 minutes. And what happens if you were to go a little bit under or a little bit over the set temperature? If you have it under the set temperature, it wouldn't be very, it wouldn't be cooked in it. And if you go over, the snickerdoodles will get hard. And snickerdoodles are supposed to be a, a soft textured cookie. Okay. So that will throw the balance of the cookie. So we have 10 minutes? Yes. All right. All right, so it's been 10 minutes. Now we're going to pull these snickerdoodles. Oh my goodness. Mm. Okay, so what are we doing now? So right now, we will be taking the cookies off of the tray because if they sit in the tray, they will continue to cook because of the heat. And then after we scoop them all up, what's next? We taste them. Are we sprinkle a little bit yeah. more cinnamon sugar on that too? These look delicious, absolutely beautiful. And they look soft too. You grab your, I got my pencil, you grab your pencil. On three? Yep. One, two, two three. Okay. Voila. And now we taste. All right, so you get, you, you, you choose first. I would only. I'm gonna grab this guy right here. All right, we're gonna go for it? Yep. All right, Ready? one, two, three. Mm. These are good. Mm. They're so soft. Yeah, that's what the cream of tartar does. Mm. You get that butter too. It hits you right at the bottom. I didn't really know how to make sneaker deals before. I never really tried it. But now I'm gonna go home and take, take my crack at it for real. And now everyone at home know how to make sneaker doodles too. So Jordan, thank you so much for walking us through this process. A little high five. Thank you. Alrighty. Mm -mm -mm. Those cookies are too good to stop eating. I'd like to give a huge shout out to Jordan for showing us how to make snickerdoodles and walking us through it. And for anyone that's, you know, getting excited about culinary, I hope that you have your eyes set on these CTE programs. I'd like to thank you for joining us on another episode of CTE Explained. This has been Bryce Taylor with the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Wow, those cookies look so good that I can smell them from here. Those ingredients were strange, but the final product looked great. I think my favorite kind of cookie is snickerdoodle. How about you? Mine will always be chocolate chip. Let's head over to Dunbar with the field reporter Amaru to see the EMT program. Hey, it's Amaru from the City School Student Media Team, and welcome to CTE Explain, a series where we dive deep into the CTE programs in our schools, talk to real students, and get a real feel for what it's like. Today, we're focused on the EMT program at Dunbar High School. From evaluating patients to getting career ready, they're doing it all, so let's go. So today, we're all about Dunbar's EMT program. Here, I have two of the best students in the program, Tara and Jada, here to show us a little bit about what they do every day. All right, so what do we have here? This is the AD. What does it do? This is to shock someone if they're unconscious while you're doing CPR. What kind of situation would this be used in? If you're in a pool and you drown, and then once they're given you, you know, they, it's always used for CPR. So to bring somebody back to life to get their heart moving. So it's like standard? Yes. All right, cool. What do we have over here? This is a cervical collar. What do you use these for? Um, we use these for a trauma patient to keep their head stable so they won't injure their spine or if they have any injuries, we just put this on them. Are these used in every trauma situation or just specific ones? Every trauma situation. Uh, how do you put it on? Yeah, show me um, how do you put it on. You measure the person's neck with your fingers and then you use this and put it wherever your finger lands. And then put it just on That's pretty cool. All right, let's go check out the other side of the lab. What do we have over here? Over here, we have 
the oral airways is to access the airway of someone that is unconscious or maybe you're trying to clear out their airway so you need to put these in, you know, get it clear. So this is like a standard part of like a EMT's kit? Yes, so you would measure it by putting it on the side of the face and it has to, the ends of both sides have to be on the edge of the mouth and the earlobe to see if it actually would fit perfectly in their mouth. All right, and what kind of situation would this be used in? person was unconscious and it's, it's to get their tongue out of the way of them breathing if you're trying to get them to back to life. All right, so who's this guy over here? What kind of things do you do with the mannequin? What are like his functions and whatnot? We put him on a stretcher to see how it works. We do CPR on him. So this is basically like a fully functional like human. This is like state-of-the-art technology for EMT to have a practice on, right? Yes. It's pretty cool to have in this program. All right, thanks for showing us around. Let's head over to the mannequin so she can give us a demonstration on CPR. All right, so Tara and Jade are gonna show us about the procedures it would take to help somebody that is unconscious and in need of CPR. Okay, let's get it. So, um, I would come in, I would say, you know, ma'am, are you okay? Are you okay? And then if she doesn't respond, then we go about CPR. First, we check the pulse to see if there's any pulse beating. And then you check to see if there's chest rise and fall. If there isn't any, then they would need CPR. You have to expose the chest. So you pull it up, put your hand down the chest, and start CPR. Two, three, four, five, oh, wow. six, seven, eight, nine, seven, seven, eight, seven, nine, thirty. So you're trying to get her heart to start? Yes. Using her heart to start, that's cool. Yes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, thirty. We switch and we switch and he needs you to go and grab the AED. All right, the red bag. I remember that. All right, so what do we need out of here? You turn the AED on first, and then you apply the pads. Apply pads to patient's bare chest. Plug in pads connected. It shows you where to, the way exactly to put it on there. One goes here and one goes over here. Then you turn this on. All right, so what does this thing do? Analyzing heart rhythm. It analyzes the heart rhythm. Do not so, touch the so it can tell what type of shock that it needs. Clip, stay clear of the patient. Shock advised. Charging. Stay clear of patient. Deliver shock now. Press the orange button now. Can I do it? Go ahead. Shock delivered. All right, so if this were a real person, what would it have done? It would have pushed shock the chest checkup. Up. And then you just re reapply that CPR? Mm -hmm. You do CPR again until they wake up, if they wake up. All right, so what certifications do you need to like get out of this program? You have to go to the fire department for, and then you have to graduate from the fire academy and then you be become a firefighter, EMT, or a paramedic. Jada, you're a senior. Having all this EMT knowledge, what are your plans for next year? When I graduate, I want to go into the fire academy and then become an EMT so while I'm in college, I can begin money. And then when I graduate college, I want to become a labor and delivery nurse. So what are your plans after you graduate having all this EMT knowledge? After I graduate, I'm going to go straight to the fire academy. And once I graduate from the fire academy, after taking all of my tests and doing all of my ride-alongs on EMT, I will become a firefighter EMT. And that's right. what I want my career to be. So what about this program do you think would be enticing or cool for eighth graders to know about? Um, I'd say that this program it has a lot of hands-on training. Training is important because when you go out in the field, you would have to know exact, well, you would know exactly what to do. Help you for when, after you graduate. So you'll already be experienced. All right, big thanks to Tara and Jada for showing us around the EMT department. I wish you luck on your journey. Uh, mm -hmm. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we had a great time learning about all the opportunities you can find at Dunbar's CTE EMT program. This has been another segment of CTE Explained. I'm Amaru Barber for the City School Student Media Team. See you at the next Pathway.
wow, that's amazing to see students learning to do CPR and resuscitate patients. I know, it's really cool that Baltimore City School students are getting provided opportunities to learn skills like this for future careers. Speaking of amazing programs, let's check out what the students of Baltimore Design School are doing. Let's watch these up and coming architects in action. Hey, it's Niles Garrison, and welcome to CT Explained on City Schools TV. In this series, we dive deep into the different CTE programs, talk with students, and get a real feel for what it's like. In this episode, we're in Baltimore Design School. Let's talk about the architecture program. From the process of the planning to drafting the overall model, you'll find it all here. So let's go. So today, with the, with the architecture student, Harrell. So Harrell, what are these drawings? It's my after school hub. And my school hall is basically on gaming and, stu and study hall. The first floor represents the um, gaming area, which is which the, are the three um, rectangles. How did you draw out these uh, sketches? I drew the sketches using a um, one, -eighth, one eighth scale, which is right here, and I use this for the sixteen with sixteen, which is right here. What do you mostly uh, like about it? How I can be creative in my own way. I don't have to abide by anyone's rules. I can do I can do as I please. Thank you for the model and showing me basically what the architecture program is really about. Thank you. You're welcome. Destiny, what do you have right here? I have a scale model of the plan that we are going to do for our exhibit and Right now we're just making mock-ups of it to see how it would look if we need to do some last-minute changes. Show me different parts of this um, exhibit that you guys are coming up with. To create our own display piece or like anything that can go into the show that can show our abilities to create something. I just did like a, a table. If we did the model, you can centerize the model and then you can put other small pieces around it and just make it look pleasable. This is our last exhibit, so it's just showing everything we learned in architecture for the four years that we've been taking it. Mm -hmm. How important was the collaboration on this project? You're doing architecture, so that means you're just doing buildings. You're doing architecture, you're designing cabinets, you're designing bikes, you're designing uh, tables, you're designing even a weird sculpture that you just happen to make. It's different uh, subgenres of architecture, so from there, it's everyone finding their specific attributes and saying, hey, I'm better at making cabinets. Hey, I'm better at designing this side of the building. Or, hey, I'm better at just designing a table. Um, do you think this school right here really pushed people into becoming architects? I, I feel like architecture is the best part of the school because when you're doing architecture, as I said earlier, you're not just doing the generalized, like, I'm creating a building. You can go into any aspect of architecture, whether it's designing tables, whether it's product design. Thank you for showing me this model. It really gave me a, a good debrief of what the architecture program is like and what you guys are looking forward to the future. Thank you. This is Devin. Um, I just heard him talking to Mr. O'Hara about his uh, model. Devin, give me a discussion about what's going on with your model. All right, in my model, I was thinking that we could use basic tables and build up pyramid-like structures to then display people's artwork on the side. My first idea was to have this cut out like this and have triangles on the end where each side could hold the art, like a piece of artwork. But then I changed my mind. I was just going to have this side built up and have the inside hollow so we could just leave our models inside. And for each side, we could have the person's uh, name on the top or bottom to describe whose artwork it is. And if the person want to have something to, like, explaining or if they want to stand there and tell people about their artwork, they can. What really made you come up with this idea? I just saw everybody doing either wall extensions or just flat on the table. And I was like, why not have it elevated so where people can just walk in and just look at it? Just give me a rundown. What do you really like about the architecture program? I actually got a passion for it, and it was just something fun. I thought that was real fun to do. And I like being hands-on and building models. So, David, what is the average day um, in this architecture class? We start brainstorming. After we get to brainstorming, we all have a group discussion about it, trying to get pointers on how we can make our project better. And then we just sit here and do the models. Um, well, thank you, Devin, mm -hmm. for showing me. I'm going to let you get right back to your work. Right. 
Thank you. Thank you. That was such an amazing inside look of the architecture program at Baltimore Design School. Thanks again to everyone for showing me their models. They were pretty cool. Make sure to watch additional episodes of CTA Explained on City Schools TV. And you can find us on YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. This has been the Knowledge Garrison on City Schools TV. See you at the next pathway. Wow, the students are so focused on the arts. Honestly, and it's incredible to see that they will benefit from these experiences. But now, it's time for our first break of the show. But when we return, we will check out some truly hands-on program. All right here on Building a Generation. Stay tuned. I need to come to school so I can pay my senior dues, so I can get good grades, so I won't look like a fool. See, having a great mind is a wonderful tool, but how can I use it if I don't come to school? I'm an A and B student. I say see you later to the F's and to the D's. I'm just trying to get a scholarship in my college degree. So HBCUs, come hit me up, please. It's important to come to school every day so you can read a contract and sign a check so you can get paid. So kids, don't believe in the stereotypes that society feeds you. Go to school so your beautiful minds can shine brighter than the moon. I know times get rough, but you have to pull through. I know you can do it. All you have to do is come to school. Tenemos un papel para jugar, especialmente cuando se trata de asegurarse que cada estudiante esté en la escuela todos los días. Las escuelas de la ciudad pueden crear un ambiente que hace que la escuela sea un lugar donde los estudiantes quieran estar. Muchos estudiantes no pueden estar en la escuela debido a problemas personales o financieros. El personal se conecta con los estudiantes para identificar las barreras en el hogar, la comunidad o el edificio de la escuela que dificultan la posibilidad de asistir a la escuela todos los días. Las escuelas pueden recompensar a los estudiantes por una mejor asistencia con anuncios y viajes especiales. Así que hagamos nuestra parte para asegurarnos de que todos nuestros alumnos estén en la escuela todos los días y listos para triunfar. I am a Baltimore City Public School student. I'm a lot of Baltimore City Public School. I'm a deputy Baltimore City B. Salut, je suis une élève de Baltimore City Public School. So I'm a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. I'm a student of Baltimore City Public Schools. We are Baltimore City Public School students. And we celebrate diversity every day. These are our future, engineers and electricians, software designers and doctors, construction workers and child care providers. They will build apps and houses, create menus and video games, work with cutting edge technology and kids. They'll be found in classrooms and courtrooms, construction sites and computer labs. They are Baltimore City Public School students. They are career and technology education back to Building a Generation, our show for bringing together the best of what's happening across Baltimore City Public Schools. So let's get back into the swing of things. We're going to send it out to Michael Joseph, who is at Edmondson Westside, checking out carpentry students working on a chicken coop and a shed. Take it away, Mikey. Hey guys, it's Mikey Joseph and welcome to CTE Explained on City Schools TV. In this series, we dive deep into different CTE programs, talk with students and get a real feel for what it's like. This episode is all about the carpentry program at my school, Edmondson Westside. I know we stopped by Carver in another segment, but you must check out the projects we're about to show you. Let's go! Alright guys, I'm here with Ivan. This is one of the A students in the carpentry class. What have you guys been doing on your project so far? Um, well. Today we actually started working on the legs for the, uh, the coop and then so we had to cut two 16 inch leg platforms actually and then we cut two 12 inch legs and that's where we went over here. So we used this to cut two of the 12 inch leg and then we used this one to uh, cut the, the two 16 inch posts. So Ivan, can you show me one of the posts that you guys cut? Oh yeah, well my group actually cut these right here and these were the 
12 inches. What do you do next with the post? Oh, well, after we cut, then we got to go in there and um, do a, a Craig hitting, a hitting screw system. So this is where we actually do the hitting hole screw system. So first you want to make sure that this is actually lined up to the perfect inch of the wood. The wood is actually secure. And then you're going to use this specific drill bit. And then you choose a hole that actually where do you want the hole to be centered on the wood. And then you just drill it in. What's it like to be in the carpentry program? Well, it's actually fun because the carpentry program like helps you for when you get out of high school. You know, you can do different things mm -hmm. and like it helps you get more job opportunities. Thank you, Ivan, for the great chat. It was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you, too. Now let's go see what the next class is doing. Check this shed out. I can't believe they're building this in the wood shop. This is Robert. Hey, Robert, can you tell me and show me what you guys have been doing in your project? So, so far, we uh, just started laying our frame for the uh, shed that we are making in class. We're working on cross bracing to support the beams and the studs around the shed so it can be sturdy. So, could you show me what things that is going around? Okay. So, over here, we're starting uh, by getting an angle for the cross brace. Mm -hmm. So, we got it on a 15 degree angle and we've cut in both sides. What skills do you need for this project? So, for this project, mostly you just need precision, confidence. That's really it. So once everything's cut, what do you do next? So once everything's cut, we take the crossing beams over here to the framing. And as you can see, they using a, a pneumatic nailer and they putting it in. If it doesn't fit, we just get a new one or we cut it to size. This year, we just started selling some of our in, in class projects. So this is something new we never uh, did before. Man, these guys make a really comfortable Adirondack chair. I like that it's giving us more experience, giving us more like in depth on to what we could be doing and the straight and how can we really expand doing it. It was nice meeting you. Nice meeting you too, thank you. I finally got a chance to talk to Mr. Moose. So Mr. Moose, what's been going on today? Nothing much, a few projects going on. Well, everything today that you saw was the base foundation of the project. Uh, we haven't assembled it yet, but we just made all our cuts for that base. So uh, around here, we have to do everything in phases. Uh, today was just phase one. Along with the sheds that we're doing, we're still in phase one. Um, everything starts from the floor up, so, and that's where we're at here. What are some of the skills that everybody's been picking up and learning? Cutting is one, measuring, precision cuts, I mean, to a point where they know whether it's gonna be a finished product or a rough product. And with that chicken coop, it's a green initiative project. So it came along with a grant. Just give them a whole research project on what going green is about. It's a, it's a team effort, you know? I like to get stuff that, uh, in here that they can actually, you know, envelope themselves in and go full steam ahead. That's great. Thank you for having us. All right, awesome, man. Thank you for coming. I really appreciate it. Yeah, no problem. All right, cool. And that's how all our students are crushing the carpentry game. One final shout out to all the students who I got to talk to. I'm honored to be amongst your talent. This is the type of student achievement we are committed to bringing our viewers. It's real, so please make sure to watch additional episodes of CTE Explained on YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. This has been Mikey Joseph for the City Schools TV. See you at the next Pathway. Wow, it was so cool to see students at Edmondson really getting the true hands-on experience. I can't wait to see the final project and what they build in the future. Me too. We'll probably have to call them back for some renovation projects or maybe some custom gifts. Oh, goodness. Now let's check out the students who are training to become auto mechanics. And from the cars I see rolling around Baltimore, there is no shortage of work. So back to you, Bryce. Hey, it's Bryce Taylor, and welcome to another episode of CTE Explained on City Schools TV. In this series, we dive deep into different CTE programs, talk with students, and get a real feel for what it's like. And this episode is all about cars, cars, and cars. Yes, we are at Forest Park High School to check out their automotive pathway and talk to our world's future technicians. So without further ado, let's roll. All right, so for this demonstration, Donald's going to teach us how to change the brake rotors and the pads. All right, so what's the first step, man? Well, the first step is to take out the caliper pins, to take the caliper off, and then you take off the brake pads. Then there's two bolts that hold the bracket on. 
to hold this on to the rotor. So you take the two bolts out behind there, and then you take the bracket off, and then the rotor come off. Let's get into it. Okay. So now you're just gonna take the bolts off? Yeah. So do you like automotive? Yes. Was this your first choice? Yeah. Why'd you choose it? Because I find that fixing car interesting. What are your plans after high school? To open up my own business. What is the tool that you're using? A wrench and a size 13 socket. And then once you pop these off, what's next? Well, you gotta set the caliber somewhere so that the brake line won't pop while it's hanging. Sit it back here so that it won't hang and pop the brake line. Then you take the brake pads off. Now see, what do the brake pads actually do? The brake pads sit in the, the bracket. Mm -hmm. and when you press the brake inside the car, the piston inside the caliper pushes out and the brake pad squeezes onto the rotor to stop the car. So that's how the wheels stop turning? Yes. What would you say is your favorite part about automotive? Going underneath the hood. You do have classes, what is the routine like? Well, first is safety. It's very important because you can get injured. Be pretty serious and always paying attention. Yeah. Right? All right. So now what are we going to do? We're going to get a new one of those? Yes. What are these just? This is the bracket. Is it scissor? Yeah. All right. Where does bottom. this one go? I'll screw this one. The bottom. No, right here. Right here? Yeah. Pretty tight as it's going to get. Uh -huh. Now <laughs> we just use the socket wrench to make it tighter? Yeah. All right, cool. All right, so we got the new brake pads on and we got the new rotor on. So that's it, right? Yes. All right, thanks, Donna. We'll do that. All right, so now we're going to get to the next demonstration. Let's head out. All right, so now I'm here with Malachi and Jai, and they're going to take me through a routine maintenance check. So, who's popping open the hood? Yes, me. Right, here we go. All right, so in the routine maintenance check, what are we looking for? Um, the basic stuff under the hood, like the oil, windshield fluid, uh, polystyrene fluid. Uh, let's pop this up real quick. No. Um, coolant filters, that's one, that's two. Um, brake fluid, um, you don't really gotta check the battery. That's pretty good. All right, so what we'll we checking first? Um, check the windshield fluid first. Yeah. Pull that out, if you see it. That's pretty good because you see the color in it. So that's pretty full. That's and if it, was, if it was more clear, that's how you know we need to put more in? Yeah. All yeah. Right, but so we're going we to put a little bit more in there to get it up. So I'm going to go ahead and funnel. Okay. Wipe it out. Okay. Make sure it's clean. We'll pop that in there. Just pull it through? Yeah. All right. That should be good. That should be good. All right. What's next? The antifreeze coolant next. The antifreeze? That's that. Yep. Okay. All right. Sit that in there. How do you know when to stop? It has a line on the um, side. It's a max line. You don't want to put too stop. much because it's not good for the car. So, so Jared, how did it. you get into the automotive program? Pretty cool. I like it. I like working on cars. I like knowing about it. I know a lot of people that know about know stuff about cars, so I was like, why not? It's pretty dope. So these are the, uh, the air filters. And what are we looking for to see if they're, see if they're dirty? It's dirty or dusty? Yeah. Pretty clean. That's pretty clean. Pretty clean. Good. And you just pop them back in? Yeah, it's popping back, but it puts me in. So, guys, what are some of the things that, you know, people bring the cars into shops and they pay, like, a bunch of money for that they could just do by themselves? Check your oil. Like, pull that up. Like, if it's, like, see how it's, like, brown like that? Mm -hmm. If it's too dark, then that means it's, like, it's old. So you should want to change it. You could do that yourself to, to save some money. So the cool thing is when you guys, you, you guys have cars, you get your cars, you already know what to do with them if there's a problem. You only have to go to the mechanic if you really need to, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Sounds like a deal to me. Yeah, that oh. seems pretty simple. I feel like people should, you know, learn how to do this for real, for real, because it's, yeah. it's saving money. Yeah, a lot of money. A lot of money. All right. Is that it? Yeah. So we're good now. Yeah. All right, thanks, Jack. You're welcome. Thanks, Malika. You know, if you're watching, I really hope you paid attention because a lot of those things seem like you can do them yourselves and you really don't have to go to the mechanic. You can save an extra buck or two, so, you know? So I'm here with the automotive instructor, Coach Markley. Yes. All right. What are some of the uh, skills that you would say the kids acquire as they go through and as they learn the entire process? Teamwork is number one because around here we do teamwork. Uh, every station we do, they have a, you know, a shop supervisor and a shop assistant. That's what we call them here. 
just a lot of lifelong skills that they can use. So it's always good to just for kids to have that option in case they don't go to college or anything, just to have skills like this so mm. they can get jobs. Absolutely, yes. So just to recap, we learned how to assess a car, how to change the rotors and the brake pads on some brakes, and we got to speak with some of our world's future technicians. I need to hurry up and get a car just so I can work on it because this is pretty dang sweet. So with that being said, this has been Bryce Taylor with another episode of CTE Explained on City Schools TV. See you next time. Honestly, if that isn't a valuable life skill, I couldn't tell you what is. Oh wow, guess what time it is already. What time is it? It's time for the question, question of, of the show. show. What's the question today? So, to create softer snickerdoodle cookies, what did Chef Jordan use as her secret ingredient? Is it A, 24 eggs, B, goat butter, C, cream of tartar, or D, brown sugar? The correct answer is coming up right after these messages. Stay tuned. What are you doing to prepare for college? Here at Baltimore City Public Schools, there are many opportunities for students to earn college credits while in high school. Dual enrollment allows students to take courses free of charge at local colleges. This way students get to know what it's really like to be in college. P-TECH is for students interested in a career in technology. Here at City Schools, we have three P-TECH programs, and each one comes with a diploma, tuition-free associate's degree, internships, and first access to jobs after graduation. For students who complete one of our award-winning career in technology education programs, they can earn industry certification and college credits. A ton of schools offer advanced placement classes. For students, success in the International Baccalaureate program can result in course credit, scholarships, and other admissions-related benefits after high school. So get a head start on college credits and save money by taking advantage of college prep opportunities right here at Baltimore City Public Schools. To learn more, go to www.baltimorecityschools.org forward slash college. This has been Jacqueline Hammett with the City School Student Media Team. See you next time. Work is underway on modernizing school buildings, like here at Fort Worthington Elementary Middle School. The type of school buildings we deserve. Our new schools will provide community-friendly spaces and be better for our environment. They will allow for innovative technology and 21st century teaching and learning. The 21st Century School Buildings Program is positively affecting my education and my city. That's right. Learn more about this major commitment from the state, city of Baltimore, and city schools by visiting baltimore21stcenturyschools.org. Building, Building a brighter future together. Welcome back. Now it's time for the answer to the question of the show. To create softer snickerdoodle cookies, what did Chef Jordan use as her secret ingredient? Was it A, 24 eggs, B, goat butter, C, cream of tartar, or D, brown sugar? The correct answer is C, cream of tartar. An unusual choice, but a good one nonetheless. So let's check out what, at this point, can only be described as a dedicated field reporter, Bryce Taylor, once more to see CTE Day at our very own headquarters, North Avenue. Hey, it's Bryce Taylor on City Schools TV. And today, yes, today we are here at the annual CTE Fair. Yes, it's been a while since I've covered this. I know, I know. But today is a celebration of CTE and their programs and especially their students. They're here to show us what they can do and they're here to showcase their talents. We have schools like Mervo, Carver, Forest Park, Patterson, any high school you can think that has CTE, they are here today to show us what they're made of. So without further ado, let's roll.
So, Farouk, tell me a little bit about this program that you're in. I was a part of the BG Smart Energy Force uh, internship program, and I entered then the 2019 summer program, and it was a it was a big life changing experience for me, and I learned a lot. I had an opportunity to meet people that I probably wouldn't have met on a regular basis, and it was just life changing. It's hidden. Hey, you know what, maybe she don't need extensions. You know, my, my, my chef's senses are tingling. I'm smelling barbecue sauce and buffalo sauces. I don't know what that is, but I gotta go check it out. I gotta check it out. You see that? You see them wings? You know, I'm gonna interview them, but I'm telling you right now, when I'm done, I'm gonna get up on them wings and see what they hitting on, all right? I like that. Okay, why don't you tell me, why is it so important for you to be able to come here and showcase your skills? Well, it allows me to branch out and find different opportunities for me to show my skills to different people. Can you tell me, what do we have here today? So today we have our CTE programs, Project Lead the Way Engineering, Project Lead the Way Computer Science, and also Project Lead the Way Teachers Academy, where I'm currently in a capstone project, and my final project is actually a mobile 911 app. Today we are demonstrating a thermal service. We're also demonstrating braiding style. That I showcase my talents because somebody else might want to and I'm being like a light for someone else, if you get what I'm saying. What do you have going on back here? Back here, we have, we basically have simple setups of, you know, a three-way switch. You can turn the light on from like the top of your stairs, and this is basically the setup for when you turn the light on the top of your stairs, you walk down, you turn the light off at the bottom of the stairs. And after the school is over, I'll be going into uh, the work field alongside of uh, Faroon McGusha and a, other, a few other interns that uh, worked alongside me over the summer. So I was in the main room and I had to check out the things they had going in there and the food and everything. But in CTE fair fashion, I had to get, get my hands all ready because we're in the cosmetology section. I just might have to get myself a mani. Let's go. It's going down over here, man. Look at that. So as soon as I get this hand done, I'm going to head over to the other room and get a facial. I'm getting the whole shebang today. I'm going to look great. So I'm here with Cameron. And this is the facial room? No, we're doing um, makeup. Okay. Well, I'm here with Cameron. We're in the makeup room, and she goes to Mervo. She's going she's gonna to get me all prettied up. How does it make you feel that you're able to show people what you can do, and how important is that? I mean, it makes me feel good just because, like, if you're in school for cosmetology, you're expected to become a cosmetologist when you leave. And I feel like it's good to build clientele before you out of, co I mean, out of high school. My name is Chef Bryce. You know I'm nice. In the kitchen, I never cook with ice. I made a McFlurry. It's like a lot. Halle Berry. Yeah, so CT is really important because, as you know, the ultimate goal is to get a career, right? And so for some people, that career path may be going to a two-year college or four-year college. But for other students, it may be going right into an apprenticeship or right into the career field. So this is a great opportunity to um, provide exposure to the different career paths we have. Connections between their classroom experiences and the world of work and this room and all of the activity and learning really shows that connection and um, so we really are trying to build even more opportunities for our city school students so it's really exciting. You see what I'm saying? These kids have skill. Let's give a little recap. I got, an, I got a nice facial, got my eyebrows, and my mustache, everything brushed. I got a mani. I also saw some good food. I got to eat some good food. Man, I love this event. These kids showed up and showed out. They made sure that they let us know what they have to offer, because these are city school's kids. They have it all. So, and it's kind of a bittersweet moment because this is my last CTE fair. But like I said, they showed up and showed out, so I can't be too sad. So, with that being said, this has been Bryce Taylor on City Schools TV. See you later. Wow, it is so amazing to see so many students want to go back out there and continue their educations and find career. Truly, and I can't wait to see more students participate in CTE programs and get on hands-on experience in their field of interest. Well, unfortunately, that brings us to the end of our episode of Building a Generation. But that's okay, since we showed so many amazing videos. We'll see you all next time. So thank you for joining us and sharing the wonderful stories of our school community. Be sure to keep watching City Schools TV for more. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. We are everywhere. I'm Imani Humphreys-Torres. And I'm Nina Marklin. Thank, thank you, you for, for building, building a generation. generation. See ya. See ya.